again, looking at the regions for 2011 percent resistant antibiotic infections for MRSA. We can start with the normal quantile plot here. And while we can see for the south region where normality seems to hold, we have a difficult time assessing normality for the other regions. The sample sizes are small. The lines are on top of one another. It looks like it would be difficult to really assess that. In addition to that, we have unequal group sizes. We may not be comfortable with equal standard deviation either. Though remember, those are two separate questions. If you are comfortable with normality, you can then assess for equal variance. If you are not comfortable with normality, then equal variance doesn't matter because we'll be using a different test. So if we decide that we're not comfortable assuming normality in this situation for any of the reasons given, either small samples per group or that the normal quantile plot doesn't look normal or we have outliers in some groups that may make the assumption of normality tenuous, or if we just simply don't want to assume normality, then we need to run a Wilcoxon test. Would remove your means and standard deviations because we're no longer dealing with a normal sample. We want to now ask for the quantiles and we can look here at the median values and the minimum and the maximum or the interquartile ranges for the groups. From there, we would want to ask for a non-parametric Wilcoxon test. This is also called the Kruskal-Wallis test. If there are more than two groups, it is generally simply referred to now as the Wilcoxon. Press Wilcoxon. And you'll see a much simpler report than the ANOVA report. What the Wilcoxon Kruskal-Wallis does is it takes all of your 2011 values so if we go and look at the distribution of our 2011 values, and what it does is it ranks them smallest to largest. And actually, Jump will give you the ranks. So under Save, you can save for ranks. And you can see here, for example, that 29.6 for the state of Iowa is our second lowest value. We had seen in a prior video our lowest value of 27.3 in Montana. And then you can also see as we go up into the values that were in the 70s, we have a rank of 40 for Puerto Rico. And we have another rank of 42, which will be our highest for Mississippi of 73.8. What JUMP does for the Wilcoxon test is now that all the values are ranked, under Y, it will separate out the ranks and sum them up. So we could actually do a summary for the sum of our ranks by our regions and press OK. And if we had evenly distributed data, that is there was no difference, the sum of these ranks should be identical or nearly identical. Let's go back here and look at the score sums compared to what we did. You can see for Midwest, the sum of the ranks is 150. And look here, the sum of our ranks is 150. Northeast is 117, South is 534, and the West is 102. These match identically here to the Wilcoxons. A quick note, we have very continuous data. That is, we don't have any duplicates. Uh, if you have duplicates, then you'll have tied ranks, and you may get a slightly different score from doing it manually than Wilcoxon. Um, just know that Wilcoxon will do it correctly. This is to demonstrate to you what JUMP is doing. It's aligning all the responses, highest to lowest overall. Then it separates them out by the region and sums up those ranks. We would have an expectation that the sums would be equal. The sum of the ranks would be equal if we had equal groups. So now we can go back to our Wilcoxon test. So our null hypothesis is equal medians based on a Wilcoxon test. Our alternative is that the medians are not equal. And we are told here by jump to reject our null of equality of medians in favor of the alternative that our median percentage results by region are statistically significantly different. 
It is a similar reporting as the equal variance and unequal variance ANOVAs. Those both assume normality. This does not assume normality. So all you simply report is the p-value here. The rank totals would change with every n, with every different sample that you have. So that is not important or meaningful. Simply report the p-value or the chi-square in the p-value and then move on with your summary. And your summary would include medians, minimums, maximums, or interquartile ranges, which is the 25th and 75th percentile. In the next video, we'll determine how to answer the question of where are they different? All three tests we've looked at, the equal variance, the unequal variance, and the Wilcoxon have indicated a statistically significant difference from the center or from the means or medians. And the follow-up question will be, so where are the means different? And we can answer that with both the ANOVA tests as well as the Wilcoxon.